I will, my aim will be essentially to, uh, to present a, a recent reproof of a classical theorem. The classical theorem is the Mother Thurston theorem. And uh, the recent reproof is using uh, H principle in the spirit of H principle and in some way making this theorem enter in the world of H principle. Um, since I think that the subject is not familiar to many people here, I will uh, do, I will make an introduction to the subject before passing to Mother Thurston. So it's about foundations of any dimension and dimension on manifolds. The foundation is just an integrable plane field. So, uh, so on manifold, dimension will be P plus Q. I consider a P plane field. That it is of dimension P and co dimension Q. It is integrable on well, if in the neighborhood of every point there are local coordinates where the in which the planes appear as parallel. Oh, so for the moment, everything is smooth. Smooth means infinite. Infinite. Smooth means infinite. And um, so locally, locally, you just see Rn radiated by parallel uh, parallels to Rt. The plane field is tangential to that. And so, in uh, locally, you locally just locally, you can all, of course write uh, any plane field as the co common kernel of Q one forms, non singular one forms. And uh, so the, the, the integrability of Sabinus theorem is just that of every i, the i vanishes on the field, it is For example, in dimension three, if I think the plane field in dimension three, if I pass to the dual uh, vector field, it would be something like U scalar uh, rotational of U. So, uh, of course, except for P equal one, it is a, a rare property. Generically, plane uh, field is not integrable. It is closed of uh, an empty interior. So the right question, which appeared rather early in the uh, red phases, uh, was uh, given a plane field, is it homotopic to an integrable one? Is there a one parameter family of plane fields, of P plane fields, going to, a, to an integrable one? And so, um, 
it's all, this is what is called the theory of suggestions. It's a study of this question. And in, in the same time, there has been wonderful partial answers, great work by, in particular by Thurston in the early 70s. And in the same time, there remain open questions, big open questions. Uh, maybe let me let me give first some results. They are all due to all are Yes, if uh, p equal to for example. Plane field is always homotopic to an integrable one, which is smooth. Uh, this is one of its theorem, which is impressive. No, not absolutely not, not obvious. Yes, if Q equal one, um, hyperplane field is always homotopic to a smooth integrable one. And in fact, what is, there is a bundle which is important, but it's not C itself. It's the, the normal bundle. Or if you like the orthogonal bundle. And yes, the normal bundle is, which means that you can represent C globally at uh, zero of uh, Q forms. In particular, the other character is not then zero. Uh, if Q equals one. Q is, okay. Q equals one. And also if the group discrete, right? Sorry? Yeah. Also if, if group discrete, if not trivial, actually, is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I would like also to give a, a little an idea of the subject to give a counterexample. And this is this is due to Raoul Bott. It, it was maybe the breakthrough that really opened the theory. The first example when where the answer was no. Uh, I, I give the most, uh, the simplest counterexample. It's on GP3, and it will be of a real dimension four and co-dimension two. So in, in fact, Xi itself will be a holomorphic uh, plane field. There is a holomorphic plane field, which is a kind of canonical, uh, a, a holomorphic hyperplane field, which is kind of canonical on CP3, namely, I'm thinking to in C4, you have a kind of complex uh, symplectic form, consider the complex form, uh, The four coordinates are complex. And of course, given a complex line, it's orthogonal for this form is a complex plane containing a complex hyperplane containing the line. Because it's Q symmetric and non-degenerate. And so this means that it passes to the quotient as a Hyperplane field in, in, C, in CP3. What I claim afterward that this hyperplane field is not homotopic to any integrable one. No, I'm thinking in real as a four dimensional field in a six dimensional manifold. Well, the P, P and Q over there are complex uh, coordinates. 
Sorry? That is uh, complex coordinates. Yes, yes, yes. P1, Q1, P2, Q2 are uh, complex coordinates. I just use this object thing that to, 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 to make for every, for every complex line, a complex hyperplane that, that contains. And so here, um, the point is that if you consider a normal bundle, well, this is a complex line bundle, and uh, rather obviously from the definition, it is the dual of the tautological bundle. As we see, as we shall see, after but this thing is too twisted to be the normal bundle of a foundation. Let's see why. First of all, so we, we shall compute this first chain class, if, if one likes, with two different, two different uh, connections. So first, first of all, you have a, a, a canonical connection with this bundle such so that uh, the curvature form, uh, I'm thinking in real terms, uh, we have a, a, two, a, two form, a closed two form, a real closed two form, which is the curvature form of this, of this connection, and uh, it is symplectic. Well, just because it's a two of the tautological, so it's it's, it's uh, classical, and says but if I have a C prime, which is homotopic to C, so of course normal bundles are, are uh, uh, isomorphic, and this cannot be uh, the Normal bundle of a foundation system because by, by contradiction, suppose that you have uh, such an integrable C prime So I'm thinking of the leaves, I'm thinking of one leaf and of the total space of the normal bundle over this leaf. And I have a kind of foliation in the, in the total space close to the zero section, this is the zero section. And I can just take an exponential map in the direction transverse to the foliation and pull back this foliation by this exponential map. And it, it gives me in the total space of uh, the normal bundle over L, it gives me um, a foliation for which the zero section is a leaf and which is transverse to the fibers. Of course, this is not quite a connection. It's, it lacks some, uh, some uh, linearity, but uh, there is a connection associated to that. And in some way, it's, it's the one jet of that along the zero section. Uh, just zoom. Just zoom on the zero section. And this one parameter family of foliations will converge to a, section, to a, to a connection, which is an integrable connection. As a limit of traditions of integrable things. So you get uh, an inter, uh, uh, a connection L, which is integrable or flat, if you like. Curvature zero. Hmm? Curve Meaning curvature zero. Curvature zero. Mm -hmm. Of connection with curvature zero, right? So yes, with curvature zero. So, of course, it's not a connection 
uh, over, uh, over M because, uh, but you can complete it to a connection over M by the usual thing of uh, just convexity argument. And so you get over M the connection Nabla prime, which is flat over every leaf. So of course, it means that it's curvature zero in restriction to every leaf. So at every point on M, I have a four-dimensional manifold passing through this point and on which the form, the two form is zero. So this, I mean dimension six, this two form is degenerate at every point. So it cannot be cohomologous to a symplectic form. But the contrary. This is very, I think, a very nice idea that Bot had. So um, he, if you take this idea and if you generalize it, then you, you find Bot's theorem, which is. Is integrable and the normal the country again classes of the normal bundle vanish above two times the codimension. So now I would like to, uh, there is a big conjecture that remains open. I'm attributed to Heftiger and some to Thurston. That P is at most Q plus one. So that this kind of obstruction vanishes if the dimension of the plane field is more than one than half of the ambient dimension. Sorry, is is less than the than one half of the ambient dimension. And actually, this remains open. But if the dimension of the plane, essentially, if the dimension of the plane field is less than one half the ambient dimension. There is no counterexample. There is no example where it is not homotopic uh, to an integrable. And th th this conjecture was maybe, maybe was uh, set for the first time right here because it was Heffliger in the spring of '72 in the AIS. In the IAS, and I'm not sure if this building was built. But so it's almost 50 years, exactly 50 years ago. I doubt it. No. Okay, then uh, Epigal just said in his notes it is tempting, one is tempted to conjecture that. But first of all, repeated the conjecture, strong conjecture. And uh, frankly, nowadays I have uh, I have no way to solve it in uh, at least in Simpsonit. There is something which is tempting in view of what's tempting to think that rather than trying to make a foliation in any dimension, you should you, you, you should assume, which is not expensive, assume that there is an ambient uh, symplectic form and try to find your foliation in the isotropic. But I've never been able to do anything. Okay. Uh, now I would like to give a few more results. Uh, in 
lower the vulnerability. But, but, but this is a kind of in view of like all this Africa, which you're going to probably talk about. This is a pure algebra, algebra topological question, right? <clears throat> Not kind yeah. of geometric, maybe it should be solved geometrically, but it's reduced to some pure algebraic topology, right? Or some, uh, yes, yes, but concerning uh, uh, classifying space, yeah. Yeah. which uh, I, I'll tell about, I'll tell about uh, the classifying space, which you don't know, actually. Okay, uh, I would like to say. A word of what happens in uh, in low differentiability, and uh, actually you, you see that here the C two class is essential, and uh, so it's not under this viewpoint. It's not surprising that uh, the answer is yes. Class Lipschitz. First term after ideas of matter. Matter. But, but what exactly is the plain field of Lipschitz or? or, or <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. Uh, so yes, of course. It means it means that the that the foliation is transversely Lipschitz, but the, you can always assume after, after a remark of Thurston, you can always arrange that the leaves, in the, that each leaf individually is a smooth submanifold. So it is, uh, so you have a brave tangential plane field and it is, and more of it is continuous. And, uh, yes. So can you sorry, so can you explain this again? So the Lipschitz is not the usual Lipschitz that I would think about. Like yes, the, yes, yes. But, but you, you, as uh, as Yasha said, what is the plane field tangential to a Lipschitz foliation? Uh, so the, ah, the, so the foliation is Lipschitz, so yeah. not the plane field. Not not the plane field, the foliation. Normal, okay. normal bundle is what? Is that? Mm. Okay. The normal bundle is just a, it's a bright structure, which. Uh, so, so then what you were saying is that the leaves are actually smooth, but yeah. the but the like say. Yes. Yeah. If so, I were in dimension yeah. one, the function which gives me the level set of the leaves yeah. is not. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can, like I, I can give you a, a very elementary example of, of this phenomenon. Yeah, you take S1 and a rotation, a, a continue, sorry, a homeomorphism of S1. And you want to suspend it into a foliation on T2. To do it like this will be kind of continuous foliation of T2. So you, you, can do, you can do a little better. But, but, but in French, in this case, you request that this homeomorphism uh, leaves it. The homeomorphism leaves it, yes, in this example, yes? Yeah. yeah. I, I yes, it. it will be Lipschitz homeomorphism. Yeah, yeah. You can do a little better. You can... Uh, you take a partition of, of the unity of, of, of the interval that is a plateau function. And uh, for every point x, between x and the field of x, you can use your plateau function to, to do this. Uh, this is the graph of what uh, t goes to uh, 1 minus tx. This is a plateau function. Okay. So this this graph is smooth. It's smooth, but that, that the variation of the various graphs is not. Uh, that's it. Exactly. That's that's Lipschitz. That, 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 and th this you can do in every dimension. Okay. Provided provide that it's at least Lipschitz. Sorry, then I have a question. So is it necessary when 
is this remark necessary if we talk just about local behavior? So this, it looks like we are kind of doomed to non-smoothness because of the whole loop we are going around. But if, if here, here if, I, uh, if I glue by x equals p of x, it, it will remain smooth. Every, every leaf is individually is smooth. You can have smooth chart, but transition by leaf. Yes, yeah, I understand. Uh, so that's what I was asking. So uh, whether if I just ask for smoothness of foliation in some local chart, then, then it's smooth. Uh, we can discuss this uh, after. Uh, it, it, there are some subtleties in this. Uh, you're right. So, uh, and yes, in class C1, that it, the foliation is class C1. When I say class C1, uh, uh, foliation is uh, 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 a foliation of class CR means that the local coordinates are CR. So at the level of the at the level of the distribution of planes, that would be like continuous. It's, 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 yeah, it's continuous as one. Yes, yes, C R minus one. So continuous. Okay, that's what so yes, in class C one, this is an important yeah. result of Tsuboy around nineteen ninety, and uh, okay, and uh, maybe uh, there is a work in progress. We did some every man. Uh, we're studying this conjecture in class transversely PL. Maybe it's, it can be done in class PL, so it's kind of strange object. Foliation with your channel is very smooth and transversely PL. It's linear. It's linear. It's linear. <laughs> okay. Now I would like to explain, to introduce the real ingredients of the theory, which are uh, behind these classical results, which are Heffliger structures and their classifying space. And, and, and both CM calls from C2 or from what smallest smoothness? Under which smallest smoothness for just C2? Mm -hmm. C2 is enough, right? Or what? To for both. For Duke's for both yes, C2 is enough. So after both, this guy, uh, this guy is. Is homotopic to the ring. After Tsuboy, this guy is homotopic to a C1 foundation. Yes. After, after Tsuboy, this, this uh, holomorphic hyperplane field is homotopic. A continuous hyperplane chain defining a C1 foundation. But not C2. But not C2. This works in C2. Okay, so the, the problem if you want to do some homotopy theory of foliations is that when you pull back a foliation by a map, even a smooth map, it's not a foliation. So uh, you, you get a kind of singular foliation, and this is a bigger structure. The, the definition. Figure structure of codimension Q of the matrix structure on M. You will define it as a kind of thickening of, of a singular foliation, which becomes regular in the thickening. So it's 
there is a normal bundle, new, that is called a microfiliation M, where new is a, a vector bundle, a real vector bundle of rank R, of rank uh, Q. And I'm thinking in the in the total space of this real vector bundle, which is a zero section, and in a small open neighborhood of the zero section, Foliation, a genuine foliation, which is transverse to the fibers of the projection. Then Q. Well, then, uh, in fact, the, the actual definition is a germ along the zero section of a foliation of the dimension which is transverse to the fibers. So you should think that it's a kind, it represents when you, when you restrict it to the zero section, it represents a singular foliation. <laughs> and when it's the case of singular foliation. Hmm? And then it's when it's transverse, it just works. yes, and it's a it's a, it's a genuine foliation. If it is regular, that is transverse also to the zero sections, then it defines uh, like here, it defines a genuine foliation. And these guys obviously can be put back by any smooth map. Many points. And there is a uh, there are notions of homotopy or concordance and of what we need. Or homotopy or concordance between gamma naught and gamma one, which are two uh, gamma two structures in M. It's obviously, gamma Q structure in M plus gamma one with restriction to which boundary is one of those. And no, I can I can say the H principle for foundation. And it was finally obtained. Well, it was it's due to one of Philip's figure on open manifolds, but it's much more difficult on closed manifolds. So on open manifolds, it's just a simple application of uh, the uh, homotopy of the holonomy approximation theorem. Uh, but uh, it's much more serious on closed manifolds, but it is due to Thurston. And so it answers in some way the fundamental question by saying that on a manifold M, let uh, Xi is a p plane field 
and assume that you are also given a gamma Q structure, gamma, uh, of normal, whose normal bundle is isomorphic with the normal bundle of Q. Then, there exists a foliation in M, which is in the same time homotopic to uh, Xi as a plane field and concordant to gamma as a gamma Q structure. And so all the, all the question, all the fundamental question amounts to find a gamma Q structure, a heftiger structure whose normal bundle is the end of oxygen. Now we have uh, you know, uh, Heftiger has built so everything lies in the existence of Heftiger structures. And it's uh, uh, very difficult. This is the very difficult really difficult question. And so this one is a smooth H principle. Yes, you can. It, it does exist in every part C. Okay, so we don't see. I mean, this one doesn't see the obstruction yet. The obstruction is in the existence of the. The obstruction is, is in the existence, existence of the gamma of the, uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, Heffliger has built a, a classifying space. And Max U for in each co dimension for the gamma Q structures. You can try to imagine it as a kind of huge inductive limit of foliated open manifolds. And uh, so it, it, it has this property that uh, it has a universal gamma Q structure on it, so that every gamma Q structure that you see on anything is a pullback of this by a continuous map to be gamma Q. And that uh, two gamma Q structures are, con are concordant if and only if the corresponding classifying maps are homotopy. What did you start with? Extra this thing? You said you went back over some some sequence of foliated space. Yes, you can realize it in a variety of ways. In fact, gamma, one of the great things in, in gamma Q structures is that they don't only exist on manifolds, but on any topological space. <laughs> so there is, uh, so big gamma Q, you can also uh, build, it, build it as a CW value complex, a huge C value value complex. In fact, if, if you think of Milner's infinite joint, for a topological group, you change the group to the groupoid of, of germs of diffeomorphism of RQ. And well, it's a very little more technical, but hardly. You, you have the same construction and it gives you. This discrete topology. Hmm? This discrete topology. Uh, you have to take each group with discrete topology. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, we, we can discuss that. Okay, and so, in fact, when you have a manifold M together with the plane field C, you consider the normal bundle. This is a map to. 
P to Q. And of course, the universal uh, gamma Q structure has uh, also a normal bundle. So there is this map to P to Q, and it has a, and your problem, this, this can be said as you can homotopy to a foliation if and only if you can lift. <coughs> And so one introduces the homotopy theoretic fiber. And so to, 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 do, to do your homotopy foliation, you have a series of obstructions, the cohomology of M with, uh, with respect to the homotopy fiber. So everything is contained in the homotopy type of the specifying space. And Bott's result uh, shows that this is not always contractible. Specifying space. Well, okay. No, in some way, the homotopy type of the classifying space is, uh, you can know it, uh, or at least, uh, at least be reduced to uh, cohomology of groups, of groups of deep homomorphisms. So the, 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 and this is what the matter of some theorem says. So let's let's give. Okay, so th th there is first a technical thing, which is not very important, in fact. Given a group, a topological group, G, you can consider it with the discrete topology. And the identity map is certainly continuous. So it has so it has continuous topological group morphism. So it has a homotopy theoretic fiber, which is also a topological group, which is called G bar. And I shall apply this to a group of different morphisms, RQ with compact support. Other substance theorem proved my mother in co-dimension one and in first one in full generality. Tells you that the homology, all homologies are within the real coefficients. The homology of the classifying space of this topological group. It's the same as the homology of the youth loop space of Hefliger's classifying space. So, uh, first of all, some things should, should be said. First of all, this, after the theorem of Thurston, this is one connected. So knowing its homology is more or less knowing the big homology, right? So, uh, so this is a beautiful isomorphism between two homology groups, homologies that you cannot compute, but which rely Hefliger the, homo uh, the homotopy type of Hefliger classifying space to something which seem more reasonable. But, but on the level of pi one, it's not isomorphic, right? No, not yeah, that's an important thing. This is one connected, and that obvious it's it's pi one is uh, is non-trivial. 
In fact, it's, a, it's an example of, of uh, Quillen's plus construction. No, I, I, I say what it really means. In a very geometric way, it says something very geometric, which is about foliated products. A foliated product is a, a product, think of it V, a dimension T, the compact manifold, think maybe with boundary, and consider product of V. RQ. RQ for the product. Is the foundation F on the total space become prefix of RQ of the dimension Q. Is transverse to the verticals and which close to the identity coincides with the stupid one, the horizontal one. The way to understand this space is that this is the classifying space for foliated products. That is, I can imagine this as the, the base of the the base of a foliated product, which is universal. For this aspect, the matter of some theorem says something extremely clear. <laughs> so it says, it says this. Consider manifold V and on V cross RQ, not a foliation, but a Heffelger structure, gamma Q structure, which is horizontal at infinity. Not necessarily. A regular nor uh, transverse to the verticals. Then you would you could dream of uh, you would like to have uh, uh, H principle telling you that you can homotope this situation to a foliated product. That is make this thing in the same time uh, regular and transverse to the verticals. This is not true. If it were true, big gamma would be contractible, contrarily to both. But something weaker is true. Instead of a homotopy, you, you will have a cobordism. There exists, uh, well, where was my base? V, V was there. There exists the cover this W, everything is oriented. There exists a cover this W from the V, the matter P manifold V star, 
and the foliated product over this top. Such that I can fill the W cross RQ with a gamma Q structure whose restriction of V is the one that was given, and, and the restriction of V star is the product. That's a concordance in that So it's, it's not a concordance. It would be a concordance if W would be V cross I. It's a cobordism, which is more general than a concordance. Another way to say is that I don't have this, this principle that I would like to have, but I, I, can, I can get it nevertheless if I, if I allow myself to make some surgeries on V. So if you cancel the topology of W, then you would be done. Sorry. If you could cancel the topology of W somehow, you would be done. And um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so of course, you have to tune it a manifold, the <laughs> base manifold. Um, but um, a Mike Friedman has made a, a, recent, uh, a recent work where he makes what he calls uh, controlled. Where in various situations is able to make V star not so different from V. Uh, a semi escobard is, as he says, so they have the same homology and the pi ones differ only by, uh, by, by a perfect group. Uh, he will tell about us during the, um, during the workshop. He will tell us about this. Now I would like to come to my today. Point of the point that is if you an ID of the proof of the matter Thurston theorem. I will not prove it. Uh, I will not prove it in this form. I will prove it in the form. So, in, in this kind of things. So trying to make a kind of H principle, although at the end it would not be uh, really fully possible. So you, 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 you begin to do as much as you can with the uh, holonomy, uh, holonomic approximation theorem. And uh, in fact, uh, here, with the holonomic approximation theorem, you can do the following. You can, you can, you, you can um, usually you, for example, you would, you, you would use it to, to, to solve your problem uh, on a, and the codimension uh, in you know, the neighborhood of the codimension one skeleton of a triangulation. But here it's a little more than that. You, so given your gamma Q structure, gamma here, you kind of solve the problem except on a finite number of kind of niches. I'm thinking of this as a wall. And so I can extend gamma to a gamma Q structure uh, 
cross I G minus some niches and uh, so you, you have this uh, singular gamma structure here and uh, accepting the niches here on V cross one over V cross one it is regular and transverse to the fibers. And also it is regular and transverse to the fibers close to the boundary of the niches. That is here, there, there, and there. So this, this side of the niche uh, remains unfoliated as well as the interior of the niche. Then we reduced the uh, problem of extension inside the niche. You have a foliation. This is I, that is a ball in V, a DP. That is a ball in RQ, DQ. And you already have this foliation, which is defined and transverse to the verticals. Uh, on these side walls of the niche, on the back wall of the niche, and also close to the ceiling and the floor. I'm thinking to Q equals one, but it's the same in the dimension. I speak of the floor and ceiling. The, the point, the difficulty for the extension is that close to the floor and the sailing, the foliation is transverse to the verticals, but in arbitrary position with respect to the box, with respect to the floor and the sailing themselves. That's the difficulty. If I make some two-dimensional kind of uh, drawing, you will... So I, I, I'll try to, to extend from the from the back wall to the front wall, of course, but I will uh, have some difficulties because of this arbitrary position. Actually, uh, what I'm going to do is to take a fine triangulation of the base, dp cross i, and consider the which are the products of the simplices of the cells of the triangulation by DQ. And uh, I can fill the interior of the niche such that there is uh, upper and lower boundaries of the prisps are tangential to the foliation, which is already defined. And provided that my, my uh, triangulation collapses to the back, which is easy to which is it's easy to take such a triangulation, you will I will foliate one after the other the prisms. But my main my my problem will be that. If I have such a situation with a yes, in such a situation here, my foliation is already defined here and there and there. 
But of course, if I, when I will pull it back through the prism, to the front of the prism, there is no reason that the complicated thing that I already built here matches the one there. I'm going to make slightly better drawing problem <clears throat> in a more realistic Here is a prism. This is the front, the front prism. So the foliation horizontal here and horizontal there, and I have a complicated foliation defined already defined on the uh, back walls of the prism, but also my foliation is already defined here, that is, and it can be taken to be trivial, horizontal, so that there is also, it is also defined and horizontal here. And uh, the, the lower part of the front wall is a window which is free, but the problem is that probably the foliation is already complicated there. And so in general, there is no way to pull it to the front so that it matches that. So it's an idea of, of Thurston. I should have said that, that it's inspired by a method in a slightly different frame uh, introduced by Thurston called by him inflation. It was his method to prove the edge principle for position. And we can, then the idea is that you renounce, you admit that you won't foliate these two small parts, these two small regions. And then in the same time as you, as you pull the, the foliation from the back to the front, you can push it downstairs like this. Of course. And so all the complicated part of the, uh, of the already defined foliation goes to the open, to, 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 to the window here. And you are left with, on this drawing, two solid cylinders with a foliation on the boundary, which is horizontal in some part. But here, since I've pulled down, it does this. So it is a suspension of a diffeomorphism of DQ. And I have two copies of that. So, the, the, so you, you leave these holes unfolded for the moment. And of course, as you in the induction, the holes propagate. And at the end, you are left with a, a concordance with holes. The drawing is like this. So you have solved your problem. Except for the holes, so the, the hole which appeared while creating uh, a prism propagates under such a way uh, 
and you have a finite number. So here is a DQ. This is supposed to represent that. So here is a DQ, there is a D2, and it's the product of this elementary hole by uh, some core, which is a compact manifold with boundary of dimension Q minus one. And here, these holes are the manifestation of the fact that you cannot have a pitch principle. If you could avoid them, big gamma would be, big gamma bar would, would be contractible. Then the idea is that you will surgerize this concordance in order to fill the holes. And the idea is, is very old and simple. If you want to fill such a foliation and the boundary suspension of the diffeomorphism, which is here D2, by a foliation transverse to the verticals, well, of course, it's not possible. This phi is not the identity. But if you change D2, if you surgerize D2, if you add some handles to go to the surface of genus G with one boundary component, and if phi, if you write phi, product of commutators in diff, then you can suspend all these guys and you obtain in the product SG cross DQ, uh, foliation transverse to the, <coughs> to the vertical. This is the classical suspension method. The Latin test group is, is perfect. Yeah, so you, you can see the, the you can see the reason why there is a, a, a strong relation between the perfectness of the diffeomorphism groups and the theory of foliations. And uh, so th there are two things. First of all, there there is a theorem that the diffeomorphism group is perfect, uh, except in some <laughs> classes of differentiability. Uh, and second, if you do correctly your uh, construction, you have more or less the choice on G. So you can avoid the problem. Uh, and so by taking this transformation and making a product uh, by the core sigma, you see how to transform to how to fill a, a, a hole, which is obtained from this one by changing the base. So it is, it is enough to consider the projection of the base of the hole in V cross I. And you, you, you perform a transformation. So th this is a sigma cross D2 in V cross I perform the transformation, which is to cut sigma cross D2 and paste sigma cross Dg. So this was a sigma cross D2 cross RQ. And you paste sigma cross Dg cross RQ. And you are able to fill your, your hole with the foliation transverse to the vertical. Then you still have one problem which is that you don't have only one hole, you have a million of holes, and they are uh, two by two disjoint upstairs, but their projections to the base are not disjoint. So when you, which it's not really a problem. When you do this, if you do this properly, when you fill the hole, the other holes remain simply their core, the, the manifold sigma, which is their core, is itself surgerized. 
But this way you can fill the holes one after the other until there is no more no hole anymore. And of course, you will have changed the vicross eye to a more complicated cobordism. But you've got the matter of Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Uh, in the case where you consider PL, what, what happens is that there is an alternative construction of big Emma by Peter Greenberg, which, who made a, construct, a kind of uh, much more handleable construction of big Emma by induction on the codimension key. Uh, it's not so so handleable, but it is a little handleable. So we we hope that we are able to compute the, the homotopy up to restriction in this situation. You claim the conjecture should be the, the conjecture. The conjecture is that uh, the Heplicopson conjecture is that amounts to say that Pika Macu bar is too few connected. And what is known from Thurston, Q plus one connected. So we, we hope to be able to compute the two. Maybe, maybe we, the first unknown, maybe the first unknown case we already have it. So we have some. In, cl in class P, thanks to Peter Greenberg's work. Gail, is it possible to ask a remote question? Sure. Can you hear me all right? This is Mike Friedman. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, thanks. Uh, in the uh, drawing of the prism on the lower left blackboard, the uh, triangle at the bottom, is that two-dimensional or p-dimensional? The, uh, the far left, the most left of all your diagrams. Yeah, what is the, oh, sorry. Uh, is the, sorry, it's the most left that I can see. There we go. Is that triangle at the bottom dimension P or dimension two? It's a, di a dimension between two and P, uh, between two and P plus one. Maybe. But, but what I'm, the, yeah, the reason I'm asking is it's very important that those small uh, bits in the corner uh, are uh, two-dimensional I mean, this, in this argument where you get a holonomy. And that looks correct in your diagram uh, if that's a two-dimensional triangle at the bottom of the prism. But ha what happens to your argument when that's three-dimensional? Yeah, so th that's of dimension D. So th this free face is of dimension D minus one. And so that's uh, S to the D minus two. Okay, and <coughs> the... So here, the hole that will appear is uh, S to the D minus two cross, cross up. In this drawing, D equals two, so you find two points. I see, okay. Uh, so- To be one of the factors in, in, in the core signal. Yes. Uh, so this uh, problem at the corners arises uh, for each dimension of simplex? Yes, yes. The same, the, the same phenomenon in each dimension. Not for dimension one, but from dimension two, you have it for in each dimension. I see, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Since maybe we are a little late, let us release the audience and uh, 